Welcome back. You are still watching UBC tonight. Now with me in studio is the Deputy Police Spokesperson, Pauline Namaye. We really do have some important questions as we draw to the pause. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. It's a thank pleasure you. to have you. Thank you for inviting me. Mm. So, now as we head to the polls, you must be obviously receiving some amount of pressure from all sides. But enlighten us, how many officers are you deploying overall countrywide and how many per polling station? Thank you. Yes, uh, we will have quite a number of officers uh, that we are deploying in different capacities. We will have uniformed, non-uniformed, we will have crowd control uh, personnel uh, from the field force uh, unit. Uh, those have been trained in public order management. Mm -hmm. We'll have crime intelligence officers and several others uh, that will be working during this election. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have, uh, we're working together with several other entities, uh, non-government, one government organizations mm. uh, to ensure that the election process is calm and peaceful. Mm. Uh, Article 212 uh, from the Constitution uh, mandates us to work with very many uh, people, including the population generally, that is Ugandans uh, generally, both in Uganda and outside Uganda, mm. uh, security and organizations. Mm. So we will definitely have uh, internal security on board, we'll have UPDF on board, we'll have uh, Uganda Prison Service on board and several others. And so true, we will have quite a number of officers that we're deploying. At the polling uh, centers, you will see a, a polling constable uh, from among those that we have uh, recruited and those whom we've been having in police mm -hmm. uh, who have a contract. They've been contracted to ensure that the polling sessions are calm. But as well, we will have um, non-uniformed officers who will be in intelligence uh, to ensure that the police centers are safe. Mm -hmm. We'll have patrollers, we'll have people who will be uh, patrolling. Some of them will be on foot, mm -hmm. that is foot, uh, foot patrols. Mm -hmm. We'll have some on mountain base codes for those the areas that are hard to reach. We'll also have uh, officers on motor vehicles, but also we have air surveillance. As you know, that we are aware that we have uh, uh, helicopters that we purchased recently. We have already got manpower personnel that will be operating the the uh, helicopters from the air wing, Uganda mm. Police Force. Yeah. And so, yes, we have uh, adequate personnel, mm. but we are not selfish. We're not a selfish police. We are aware that there are several other people who have a role to play uh, in ensuring that there is calmness and peacefulness uh, during the elections. And so, the Uganda Police Force is giving it out uh, to all Ugandans because uh, internationally we have a reputation of being calm and warm hearted and loving. Mm. And so, we want to give it to Ugandans to be warm hearted and loving and tolerant and also to have compromise uh, during this election to ensure that we uh, we live together because how, how are you engaging Ugandans to do that especially at a time where the public seems to have lost its trust with the force uh, thank you I wouldn't I wouldn't put it that way because mm -hmm. we still have several uh, people reporting cases at the Uganda police force desk yes, and, 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 and so I wouldn't I wouldn't really put it to the public that people don't have trust in the police mm -hmm. yes people have their fears because people have invested in so much in Uganda some are businessmen others are bankers others are, they have different others are doing agriculture as you know that Uganda relies a lot on agriculture so yes they have a lot to lose mm -hmm. if there is no peace in but Uganda. How are you and so them? and so at different levels for example we have the crime preventers mm -hmm. that we have reported we have several of them and uh, they come from different families and they are the intelligence uh, that, that the Ugandans uh, are giving us so we have uh, we're working with them to pick intelligence from families from communities and also to send feedback because when we work with them they understand they understand the police role and therefore they train others in their families on the police role and peacefulness and the purpose of peacefulness by the way in the election and as well we are working together with um, uh, with several other organizations like the non-government organizations. Uh, for example, on Friday we were with Sion, and uh, and uh, Sion, as you know, is uh, is an election observer team, and uh, we were able to share and talk about a lot of things. On uh, yesterday itself, uh, we were with Rotary International, and we shared a lot about uh, uh, tolerance and peacefulness and and conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. And so yes, we really are engaging the communities at different levels. We have uh, crime prevention. Uh, officers at uh, uh, division officers at uh, different regions. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, 27 teams, and each team is at every uh, at different regions, ensuring that we have a liaison 
uh, with uh, with the state uh, state attorney office, that is the office of director of public persons. Then we also have uh, a linkage to the courts. We have a linkage. Uh, we, we have also the scene of crimes officers that visit different uh, scenes to ensure that we have enough evidence against those who would want to uh, cause chaos in the in the country. Mm -hmm. But as well, we have come out with uh, different statements uh, showing that we are aware that there are some groups that would like to cause uh, disorder in Uganda and uh, that people should shun these groups. Mm -hmm. For some groups, we have got adequate evidence and many have already been prosecuted. Now but for some, we only have allegations against them and therefore we, we are trying to encourage them to participate in issues of, uh, of um, contravening the law but as well in issues of violence. Yeah. As long as they do not participate, we have no case against them. But if they're involved just as much as we've had some candidates calling upon uh, their teams to be violent and to to uh, to, to fight uh, officers who are going to arrest them, then definitely it will be it will be a case for the police to take on and ensure that all Ugandans are safe and that they are able to go to the polling centers and vote because you know that every Ugandan of age and who is registered has a right to move to the polling center peacefully and cast his vote or her vote and ensure that they stand at a safe distance and wait for the election, for the, uh, election results to be announced or to attend to their own businesses, go back home, do agriculture or any other uh, activity that they could have been involved in. So if I can take you back a bit, do you know the exact number of officers you are deploying countrywide? Well, I would like to discourage that question because that is a, a security question mm -hmm. and I wouldn't want to, uh, to put it out to Ugandans that we have this number or that number. But yes, we have adequate personnel as I have told you. We are working with all those security agencies that have been mandated to work with us and they don't have very small numbers. Uh, we are also working with Ugandans generally and we don't underestimate the number of Ugandans that we have. We, we are aware that we have, uh, uh, we have quite a number of Ugandans from the age of zero to, uh, to the elderly ages so we have adequate adequate uh, systems in place to ensure that we have uh, a peaceful election and as well we have uh, we're working with the international community we are aware that there are election observers who are coming mm -hmm. and uh, they are trying to uh, to ensure that we have a peaceful election well we don't need all that we don't need all that because we as i told you earlier we are aware that Ugandans are peaceful. And as you saw, we have, we, we have a record to, to, to back us. Uh, during the campaigns, we didn't have uh, violence, as people had uh, pronounced themselves uh, on, that we would have a violent nomination period. They had said we would have uh, violence during election, uh, election campaigns, but you can see that they've been very peaceful. And therefore, we want to ensure that the election itself, the day of elections, uh, which is 18th February, is as peaceful as it can be. And the days after, because from there, we will have uh, swearing we'll have all the other days but they must be as peaceful as it should be as per the constitution and that's the work of the police force let me take you back um, Uganda police force is the is the institution of government that has been mandated to ensure that there is peace in the whole of Uganda and that people's properties are secure mm -hmm. and we have done that from time immemorial we have over 100 years we were celebrating 107 years recently and uh, we've had adequate time because when we had the 20, uh, 2011 elections we knew the 2016 elections would come so we've had all this time to prepare we have got support from uh, finance because we've got all the finances we requested for uh, to ensure that we secure uh, the polls. And we have had time to procure all the materials, to sensitize the people, to, uh, to carry out training of all the officers that we will need uh, with different capacities uh, during the election, including uh, those experts in terror. Yeah. Uh, in, in ensuring that we curb terror and we have them so we uh, we would like to encourage the country to be calm and to be assured that the police is not going to let them down we've not let them down before we are going to be with them we're not going anywhere and you're going to be peaceful during elections and the days after now you said one mm. of the uh, you are using crime preventers to engage yes the the, the, the public. Uh, recently, presidential candidate, one of the presidential candidates, Amama Mbabazi, said that the crime preventers are a political militia. And the public and the opposition claim that the crime preventers are NRM leaning. What do you have to say about that? I would like to say that crime preventers are, they, they are Ugandans like you and me. And I would like to say that you, crime preventers do not put on uniform, they are not police officers, and therefore they can cling to any party that they choose to. We, we work with crime preventers on the basis of information. 
So they're able to give us information from their communities and we don't care which party they belong to anyway. As long as we're able to share with them on issues of crime prevention. And to prevent crime, you don't have to belong to this party or the other. You, it's just, anybody can prevent crime as long as they are willing. It's a matter of reporting crime, sustaining others uh, in your community about crime, and ensuring that whoever commits crime is reported, and that's it. So that's, that's the basis on which we work with crime preventers. And therefore, for anybody... How, how are they structured on village level? How, how, how does this work? How does the crime preventing work? Thank you. Uh, all crime preventers are under the leadership of the area command the area police command. Therefore, they are under the leadership of the police commanders. Well, although they have their own arrangements of, uh, for example, we have the Crime Preventers Forum at national level, and they're able to coordinate the crime preventers in their own activities. But du during the process of doing police work, they work under the, uh, the police commanders because they're the ones who directly receive information from them. They're the ones who train them on behalf of the IGP. Uh, but Let's talk about the, the, the scenario of elections. Crime preventers are not going to be directly involved in the process of elections. How they are will not. they be involved? Definitely, in they'll, they'll be involved in, uh, in giving us intelligence in their own communities because that's the purpose of uh, crime prevention, giving mm -hmm. information that will help to prevent crime. We are not relying only on crime preventers because we already have our own intelligence sources. And uh, as I told you, we are working with other institutions of government that avail us with intelligence. But they will be very useful in ensuring that we coordinate uh, intelligence in the communities. And for example, if there is a land conflict, and that land conflict is going to breed crime uh, during the election period, they will definitely give us that information. Mm -hmm. And they are aware of crime in their communities. They know who beats his wife every night. They know who is going to, uh, who, who doesn't agree with his wife on which uh, political candidate to, to support. And they are for where violence could possibly breed uh, from. So we have all that information. So in your opinion, do you say that the, the, the public has positively received the crime preventers? They have to receive them because they are part, they are part of them. they positively received them? This is something that, uh, that uh, we can't argue about because crime preventers are the public. They are part of the public. It's like, it's like your own brother, your own sister. Would you reject him because he's a crime preventer? Because he chooses to report crime and ensure that there is no crime in the community. I believe that these are people who are appreciated in their villages because uh, their existence has helped to cut down on crime. For example, we have had instances where highway robber, robbers have been cut down, marijuana smokers and growers have been uh, cut down, and several other uh, criminal groups have been brought to book because crime preventers have been able to, to let us know, and several others uh, who are working with us. Actually, the Uganda police position is that if we could have all Ugandans, all the millions of Ugandans as crime preventers, we would have no crime in Uganda because who would commit it? That's our position. How many do we have right now? How many have been passed out? Thank you. Uh, we, we started recruiting crime preventers, or not recruiting, we started working with crime preventers from as far as 1997. Mm. So you can imagine, mm. up to date. We, we believe that the estimate of the crime preventers that we have is at 11 million. But of course people die and others are born. So we'd like to say that if we can have all Ugandans, all Ugandans, the strategy of Ugandans as crime preventers, would be happy. But uh, away from that, uh, uh, during the elections, there are places we have earmarked as um, black spots and as uh, hot spots, or places where we believe that uh, crime could be committed. And because this crime... This crime is, uh, is uh, in different ways. There are, they, they are land related issues. There is um, a competition between rival groups that is uh, stiff and uh, it could breed, uh, could breed rivalry among the supporters of these candidates. We have uh, presence of vigilante groups as we, as we talked about, like uh, Chikankane, like Power 10, as uh, is being alleged, like Solida mm -hmm. and, and all others, like um, uh, Chifes. And for Chifes, we've already seen uh, the activities, and we've been able to arrest many of them. Uh, we also have um, heavily populated areas, and we believe that some of these could be uh, used into, into carrying out activities of, cri of a Violence. criminal nature. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have some areas where we have more youth that are idle and probably are not engaged in any lucrative or uh, activity that is, that is going to help them mm. avoid crime. Can't and these, in these areas. Indeed, and these can easily be engaged into, into activities of crime uh, during the election and the days after. Uh, we also have uh, areas where there is, they are prone to uh, more tribal, ethnic, and religious uh, uh, sectarian but. behavior and so we think that this could also breed violence and um, we also have some areas that we believe uh, uh, have a history 
uh, of, uh, of violence, uh, like some places uh, that we believe, like Kalungu and uh, several others. Okay. Uh, we have what are you doing in this regard? We have, for, for these particular areas, we are keeping a very, very keen eye uh, on, the, on the areas and the activities they were in, particularly at this time of elections and the days after. And we're going to deploy uh, uh, more strictly in these areas. We're going to increase on the amount of security that we avail uh, compared to the other areas which we believe are more, uh, are more calm. And uh, for some of these areas, of course, we have, uh, uh, for example, in the Kampala, uh, Kampala Business District, we have uh, places like Kamocha, like Nakasero, Kiseka, and uh, the Kiseka Transport Terminal Area. We have Katwe. We also have uh, areas of Makindia. We have uh, Kawempe that has, uh, has uh, places like Kalere, Wandegea, Waisem, Lago. You know how busy these areas are. Yeah. Uh, Nakawa, we have Rubaga, where we have Natete, Chibuye, Nakulabe, Kiseka. Kasubi, Kasubi, and then we have uh, Wakiso areas of Nansana, Banda, Woyogere. We have uh, Riantonde, uh, where we have Riantonde town particularly. We have Butambala town. We have Kalungu, as I said earlier, where we have uh, uh, a record of urban violence. Mm. Uh, we have um, areas in West Nile, like Ajumani and Arua, uh, where we have, uh, we have uh, intelligence on party rivalry. We have Amur and uh, Gulu. We have Lira, we have Botaleja, Chibuku, we have Isinjiro uh, in Ankole subregion, and uh, and Dungamo, where we have intelligence on party uh, rivalries. We're keeping a very keen eye on them. We have been Kigezi, Kabali, and Kanungu, and uh, those are places that we are watching keenly. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Renzori area, where we have uh, Kasese district, Bundibujo, and this is where we've got information and intelligence on tribal uh, conflicts and land disputes, mm -hmm. uh, tribal conflicts as well. Uh, we have Bunyoro, Masi, Cindy, Chibale, where we have tribal and ethnic uh, rivalry. Mm. So, and several others that are, list, are not listed here. Mm. But particularly, particularly, we would like to, to, the reason we blacklist them is because we give information to the public and we want them to ensure that they avoid any incidences of a criminal nature or a violent nature because uh, we would like to encourage everybody to be tolerant. We believe that people have different, uh, different reasons for supporting different candidates. And it's not, it's not, it's not, um, it's not something that has happened today that families have people supporting different candidates and communities have people supporting different candidates for certain reasons. But let's be tolerant, let's be able to compromise and ensure that we live peacefully uh, together because Uganda, even after 20, uh, 2016, must continue and people must continue to engage in lucrative businesses and developmental uh, uh, activities that will be able to move uh, Uganda to another level. Mm. Would you assure the public that there's no need to fear with the heavy uh, military pr presence that we've seen lately. Uh, some think it's a form of intimidation, but what would you have to say about that? Oh, thank you. Um, I believe that Ugandans uh, have been supportive of the Uganda police force because it has been able, been able to secure them for uh, from time immemorial. And we're not going to stop today, we're going to stop tomorrow, we're not going to stop the day after in ensuring that our people are safe, that their lives are safe and their properties are secured. So we were given a mandate to ensure that we uh, we police the elections and the days after. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been given not only the, the mandate, we've been also given the support financial, moral, and et cetera, to ensure that uh, the elections are safe. And that's what we need to do. And we've, we are not selfish. That's why we are working with all the other entities uh, that have a role to play in so securing uh, the country. So you are working with military police? We are working with several others, as not well just as the military as police, several as others. We yes. have Uganda Prison Service to be able to help us put together those who don't want to. So uh, there is no fight. reason for Ugandans to feel intimidated? No reason whatsoever. Let's assure Ugandans that we're going to work together, that the police is not the police of people outside Uganda, it is the police of Uganda, for Ugandans, of Ugandans, and by Ugandans. Mm. And let's ensure that all of us work together. Let's believe that everybody has a right to go and vote freely, peacefully, and go back to their, to their lawful businesses. And let's encourage all of us to do that. Let's, let's abide by the electoral guidelines that were given. Let's abide by all the laws. Let's encourage all the candidates to be peaceful and to encourage their supporters to be equally peaceful. Now, as campaign, the campaign season uh, kicked off uh, last year, there were a bit of rules broken here and there. Uh, we saw the Ntungamo clashes, obviously, in December. There was a lot of reporting of defacing of mm. uh, uh, different candidates' uh, posters, and uh, even candidates campaigning beyond the uh, proposed official mm. time. What mm. have you done 
about that? Yes, um, true that uh, defacing uh, of uh, campaign posters and pictures of, of candidates is criminal. And uh, for all those who have been reported to have participated, have been arrested and taken to court, uh, of course some others do not report and they simply replace uh, the, the defaced uh, portraits or pictures. But uh, please do go ahead and report if you find anybody defacing your picture. Know that it's criminal and it's not allowed. And if anybody is participating in it, know that you're doing something that's very criminal and not acceptable uh, in Uganda. Definitely we saw uh, some incidences of, uh, of uh, uh, violent nature uh, where some people were beaten and mugged and, 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 and you know, thrown out of, of, campaign, of campaign trails. But uh, this was unfortunate because we believe that people should be tolerant. We may have divergent ideas, but you should sell your idea to me and uh, be able to bring me to your side uh, instead of beating me up and, 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 and really, really being violent to me. I uh, would like to also, also to say that two wrongs don't make one right. So if somebody has committed a wrong, then why go on and carry out another wrong by beating that person and uh, assaulting them? So that was wrong. That was not acceptable. It was not even called for. And uh, we know that there are regulations against uh, candidates being in, in the same place and uh, we've not seen instances where candidates themselves have been in the same place. However, supporters have been there in, in the same place uh, at Tentungamo, in Mokono, and we saw uh, some level of civility, some level of, uh, of uh, people trying to be civil uh, with, with each other. However, there are some extremists who are trying to be violent, and that's what we try to discourage. Uh, we have investigated these cases. Some have been taken to court. Uh, some have run away and have, have not been arrested. But definitely, foes don't die. Mm. Foes don't die. And if you commit a crime today, be sure that tomorrow you can be held to book uh, for committing such a crime. But above all, let's encourage everybody to compromise. Let's encourage everybody to, to tolerate uh, the other person mm. because you never know. After today, after the elections and the campaigns, you will still have businesses to, to transact together. Mm. Your children will go to the same schools. Let's try as much as possible to live peacefully with each other. Now quickly throw more light on the recently acquired equipment by the police. Well, thank you. Not just the recently acquired uh, equipment. Oh, Uganda Police for the yes, equipment. Always, yes, we have we but have the new ones. we have quite a number of equipment, and equipment runs out, and and some of it gets spoiled and needs replacement. And uh, true, we have been uh, in the process of procuring uh, quite a number of items. Some have already arrived, others are still at the ports, and others are still uh, in the process of being shipped uh, to Uganda. Mm. So it's not news that uh, the, the Uganda Police Force, for example, is bringing a concrete mixture. Uh, the country has been, uh, has been uh, critical of Uganda police force uh, housing units and uh, Ugandans need housing, ho housing uh, uh, for the police because the police are people who keep them safe and their children must sleep in very good houses. We have been in the process of developing our construction uh, department of the Uganda police force and uh, the construction department uh, definitely has engineers and all those people and they need equipment to use. Uh, during the process of, 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 uh, of uh, bringing different equipment it makes it, it makes much more sense uh, probably financially and also otherwise to ensure that we bring in items at the same time so uh, we have items like um, mot motor vehicles uh, bicycles pcs even vehicles APCs. with loud APCs, yes yeah. uh, with ve and even vehicles with loudspeakers because we must ensure that there is crowd control and public order management but as well you saw we have concrete mixtures to ensure that we as we carry out election uh, election security, we also have the other departments running. Other departments must not, must not stand still just because, because we have elections. elections. Thank yes. you very much for okay, joining thank us. Thank you too, and uh, we, wish, we wish everybody a very peaceful uh, election season, and uh, may the best candidate win. May the best candidate win. Well, that was UBC tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Rod Angonzi. I will be back at 10 o'clock with Simon Makisha for more details. But for now, here's the weather report. Okay, thank you, dear. Thanks a lot. Good evening. You're welcome to this weather edition from Uganda National Meteorological Authority together with UBC. I'm Sharon Nakajiri tonight. Today, if we look at the satellites taken in the morning, we had sunny intervals over several places within the country. However, in the afternoon, we had clouds developing in the south and in the eastern parts of Uganda. This is due to the high pressure centers, St. Helena and Mascarene, that are now relatively strong, pushing the rain belt slightly north over the southern region of the country. That's why today we've had a 
few sprinkles in some parts of Uganda. However, we are having a depression in the Indian Ocean that is taking away all the moist winds that would form some rain in the eastern region of the country. Tomorrow morning, we are forecasting bright and sunny conditions mixed with haze over several places within the country. However, along Lake Victoria, our capital city inclusive, we shall have sunny intervals. While in the afternoon, we are forecasting sunny intervals in the west, the central, the south, along Lake Victoria, and in the eastern parts of Uganda, all the northern sector will be bright and sunny. And temperatures in the Karamoja region will go up to 34 degrees Celsius, 29 degrees Celsius in Entebbe and Kampala. As for Kabale Highlands, we are forecasting a maximum temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. For international weather forecast, we are forecasting thunder showers in Nairobi and Johannesburg, with a maximum temperature in Johannesburg going up to 30 degrees Celsius. Light rains are expected in Lagos and Addis Ababa. As for London and New Delhi, we are expecting extensive cloud cover. For Moscow, it's still very cold and we're expecting falling snow. That is all I had for you for today till tomorrow. But do not forget to log into our website as it is displayed on your screen. Have a good night. Dubai. Crest Tank, Uganda's number one water tank with unique corrugated design for added strength.